So Archie Graham, MBE, uh, he was born on the 2nd of June 1906 and he died on the 8th of August 1992. So he was born in Paran in 1906 and educated in Shepparton and Kyneton and trained as a carpenter. He was out of work in the Great Depression and moved to Waterwall in December 1930 at 24 years of age to build a house extension for a friend. He established his own building business. He was widely recognised for innovation in the building industry, devised and constructed the first Conite homes and became the Stramit company's largest distributor in Victoria. And Liz was just telling us that um, on the back of his truck there was a little slogan that said always something different, I think. Is that right, Liz? Always a little different. Always a little different. In 1932, at the peak of the Great Depression, Archie married Mavis Castles. They had two sons, Kerry and Lee, who both worked with Archie in the building business, renamed to Archie Graham and Sons. Kerry eventually left to become a minister in the then Methodist Church, and Lee became a missionary carpenter to the Methodist mission at Yurkala, Northern Territory. Archie's love for trees and woodwork enabled him to create and donate beautiful furniture pieces, some still adorning public buildings and homes in Warrnambool. With a wonderful voice, Archie sang in the Methodist and later United Church choirs for 55 years. His caring nature and love of people befriended him to all. Perhaps his closest friend in those years was the late Sir Fletcher Jones, a fellow church member. Archie organised and led work parties to Northern Australia and New Guinea, building a hospital, houses and other facilities. Archie's wife, Mavis, died in 1974, and Merle was just saying that she was also a wonderful woman, very sweet, very capable, and just was, did whatever was needed at the time to get this stuff done in team with Archie. After Mavis died, um, two years later, he married Hilda Fisher in 1976, and they continued to work tirelessly for the community until Archie's death in 1992. The contributions to the community of Warrnambool by Archie Graham are too numerous to detail, but the following list is an indication of his wonderful service to the city and the region he loved. He was planner and chairman of the Albert Park Committee, active member of the Warrnambool Rotary Club for 50 years, instrumental in the establishment of the United Church campsite at Narrawong, and member of the management committee for 35 years, member of the Warrnambool Technical School Council for over 20 years, Life Member of the Warrnambool and District Cricket Association, Foundation and Life Member of the School Chaplaincy Committee, presented with a Warrnambool Citizenship Award in 1970, awarded an MBE in 1977 for his outstanding community service, inaugural Chairman of Heatherly Council, Planner, Coordinator and Honorary Clerk of works for stages 1, 2 and 3 of Heatherly Homes. He suggested the construction of the building which, to his surprise, would later be named in his honour, the Archie Graham Community Centre, a fitting tribute for his 60 years of magnificent service. In their wills, Archie and Hilda established the Archie and Hilda Graham Foundation, which continues to serve the community they loved through secondary and tertiary education scholarships and donations to other charities, including the most recent one, Loved and Shared. Thanks, Joy. There are copies of that available if anyone would like a, a copy. So it was because he was out of work in the 1930s that he came to Warrnambool. What a great move that was. Just came to do a renovation job. And then someone says, well, can you build my house? And so it goes on and on and on. Yeah. So I love that line, uh, Les. Always a little different. And Archie was an initiator. He was a motivator. Who had the gift of encouraging others to work with him. And who liked the quotation, the difficult things we do at once, the impossible takes a little longer. That's great, isn't it? He had not just initiation an initiator and motivator but he was able to put himself and others to the task of doing the difficult challenging things too i love that little line ask him what his greatest achievement was and it depends on which week of the day of the week you ask him but at one time he shared about those work parties were one of the greatest achievements 
to North Australia, Yukala, and the islands, highlands of New Guinea. But then at other times he'd say, no, it was Narrawong. The campsite of Narrawong, which Trevor knows all about. Yeah. And which is no longer here, unfortunately. And then I'm reading this little book shared with me by Ron and Ray James. They're sad that they can't be with us today. They're travelling all over the countryside. But of course, Ray is a relative of Hilda, I think. I hope I got that right. Yeah, Anissa Builders. But it says in this little book that at 83, at 83 he was supervising both the building of a new kitchen at the Uniting Church, which is where our community lunch operates from there, and a major rebuilding program on the shops, which the church owns. But on another day, in response to the question, the thing that has given me most satisfaction is the establishment, he would say, of Heatherly. Heatherly. Largely here because of people like Archie. Now, he didn't do it on his own. He couldn't have done it on his own. He was part of a team. And uh, Jack Hazeldine's picture came up there before. One of the many on that team. A great influence. Um, but that gave him a lot of satisfaction to see this property being developed here, out the back. I think it was used to aiming for 16 units for aged people, independent living, but which the architect later extended to 64. So how it grew. From little things, big things grow. Archie counted it a privilege that the church gave him the responsibility of being the honorary clerk of, clerk of works for the building of them, and later the 11 built by the only church on Anglican land. Now there's a lot more that was in this book, but I'm just picking out a few bits and pieces. And one of the bits that here is really good, Archie was an enthusiast and had a love for many things. He loved singing, and apart from solo work, believed that his 50 years of singing in Methodist church choirs taught him a great deal about the Bible and theology. I think we all nod to that, testify to that with the love of music. Archie loved growing things and always made to obtain a good veg veggie garden, but his love for trees was even greater. It always saddened him to see any tree destroyed and he loved the timber it produced. And during his retirement gained much pleasure from preparing unusual timbers and then making them into lovely tables, which he delighted in giving them away. One of those pictures up there from the standard has him kneeling over. If you look very carefully, it's a table in front of him. One of his tables that he produces just at the bottom there. You've also got to say this though, don't you? Archie loved people, and his wide circle of friends covered a broad range of interests such as Fletcher Jones, my best mate, or the name of the Reverend Keith Seaman, retired Methodist minister, governor, who became governor of South Australia. But also there were many who began as they were down in their luck, when they came to him seeking a job. And he gave them employment, even if there was no vacancy. And they finished up as friends. And who else would have accepted the offer of an alcoholic to become a member of a church work party in North Australia? He got a great delight out of his sons who joined him in the business, Lee and Kerry, but then he also got a great delight when they left. Kerry has become a United Church Methodist United Church minister, and Lee to be a missionary carpenter of the Methodist mission at Yakala. When Archie was in the hospital's intensive care unit after regaining consciousness following a major heart attack, November 1982, after realising where he was and just what had happened, he said, my work cannot be finished. The Lord must have something more for me to do. Did you hear about the oil slick? Lou, you would like this one. 
There was a major oil slick in Wollongong. There was a very small grant of money given to clean up this terrible oil slick that had devastated the beach. Then Archie had one of his visions. He talked it over with the city officers who agreed to let him use the council trucks and to buy all the plastic bags needed. The standard accepted his story to inform the people. And on the Saturday morning, a great team of volunteers turned up to move like a wave along the beach, filling the bags, loading them onto trucks. The beach was cleared at no financial cost to the community, and people enjoyed their time together. That says the boss. And there's many more things that we can say about Archie as well. You've got heaps and heaps and heaps of memories, Rob. Rob Bishop, you yourself have been a builder as well, so you feel Say it again. Without actually thought of, anything that actually thought of, was very often building these sort of things for the eternity of the car, because we built it all the ones that is. We did a lot of things get together. Um, a lot of the things I know about Archie, you've already sort of covered in the general sort of thing, but uh, the sort of and um, you have already mentioned, you see, us down here, you have a son of the car, and we're at the bottom of Australia, and that's the top. Well, and your car had no road from anywhere. You, you, they got all that stuff out there. Right? And then you know, twice a year, you got all your, all your food and everything, including building materials. And every six months, well, they've built up a lot of materials, building more than what carry, more than what they handle. I was just telling you before, he was working with Aboriginals, and Aboriginals up there in numbers would say, well, like if one went out and come back and was ten prisoners, you know, down the creek, they'd say there was one ten or three or four or five. Beyond that was not. The county didn't go beyond the fire. Well, we just start working with carpenters building buildings. You know, that's your county race. It's fairly difficult to, you know, I was in buildings that were being said with rules, one of the things you use many times every, every day on a building job, so But rules go a lot more further than the fire, so that's just an instance of the difference. So Archie, you yeah, know, knew all of this, of course, because I was funding with Lily. And uh, yeah, he used to go a week and then that. Well, I would just try to think of any of us with that sort of problem. Well, we really think that we down here can go up. Well, yes, he, well, we can do that, you know. So we all got talked in. Well, so. And we can do that attitude. Um, and we had to pay, pay to go. It's not as though someone come up with the money or the government. We you know, had to pay our own fares up and all that sort of thing. So, just one example. You've already mentioned it was Papua, so where they built the hospital. Um, they did, um, I only went on the one working day, which was the colour. You know, 34 people, I think it was, went. Not all from this church, from numbers of churches, um, one or two Catholics, for example, one or two Presbyterians, it was quite a mixture of people. Um, but there was other things. And uh, one of the things was the man supper or the minister up at Duncan Dun His house, or he used to call the parsonage, his back in Methodist days. Shows where Methodists come from, the Church of England originally. Um, the house was a bit small. He wanted an extra room. Well, they had a couple of tradesmen up there, well, they got the foundation done. So we went up one day to put the frame up. Well, don't pay me any love, big dumb interest. Don't want too many on one room to put the frame up. And, uh, the end of the grandparents and it was just across the road a bit on the tour away. 
Bush Club was coming around all day. We were a bit busy working out putting the hats frame up. It wasn't exactly comfortable. I mean, the fire wasn't near us, but just to give you a little bit of idea of how possible it was. Yeah, it seems like that. Um, You've got heaps and heaps of memories. Um, the, by the way, the year Carla, we do have a display in the foyer. So if you want to see some of the gifts from the Yukala to this church in the display box, check them out. But um, just to finish with, with Ron, what do you, I mean, there's been so many things, problem solving was one of them, but what is the most outstanding character, do you think, of uh, Archie Graham? His, uh, his ability to think, that, well, I've still already, already covered a bit, but where most of us would see the possibility like the church owned so much land down where the manse was. It went right through what time school? It went right from Court Street down to Tomlin Street. Well we we owned quite bits and pieces of it. And uh, you know, well okay we owned it. Archie's lots of them. Oh well we can do that. Uh, a good feature with Archie in that and many other things. He'd come up with ideas, oh, we can do that. You know, you're way beyond what you can do, but he can do that. And, oh, well, once you got going, we did do it. Now we're on, on camp. We had weekend after weekend that we went from here. It was, it was a work, you know, working groups. And, uh, you yeah, know, I, I spent a lot of Saturdays over, you know, over there working. Well, there are a couple of people over at Port of Mon in particular who have to work over there, but nearly all of them work for something here. Yeah. Okay. Can do attitude, that's wonderful. Well, sit there. But just one other thing was, I can remember, it, it, it's, a, it's something about the man. You know, we had the church shops, and I remember one of the rooms on the, you know, off Lightning Street was, was rusty and getting some holes in it. And Archie wanted to go ahead and put some sticky stuff over it to fix it. And we want, none of us wanted to have it. Yeah, you know, new one really do it because the water was still there, a couple. Of, well, we argued for two, two meetings, you know, one of the part about this, about doing it. And uh, Archie was, you could argue with him, but you could, you could if we, you was arguing about the subject, not each other. The only wish parliaments would do it, you know. <laughs> you know, you can have brought out ideas. Um, you know, remember one that meeting, one of the ones we had out um, the side here. Well, he and I were taking different views. I knew strongly about it. Walking out the door, he's going, we were talking friendly. Well, you know, Ron, I'm going over to, you know, to Narrowall on Saturday. Can you come with us because we want some Amex book down? You know, like, if you disagreed with Archie and you were sensible that he was, which we always were, you could get it and you get the best of ideas. Um, you know, there you go, it's him, you know, he's a great man. I love that comment. Yeah. yeah, I love that comment, Ron. I'm so glad you shared that because, uh, yeah, it's the subject and you, you can disagree and not play, not go against the person in the process, but. Now, Trevor Fraser, uh, you'll sit in one of these special wooden chairs. Um, what, why are you in the church? <laughs> well, we came here in 1990, and, uh, and Archie sort of cycled up to you and try and find out what you're about. Anyway, found out I was working for the midfield and so on. Oh, you couldn't have any big trucks with you. Yeah, oh, right, so he's thinking. The next week, he says, now, can you get that big truck? And I said, yeah, I'll arrange that. Oh, good, good. He said, now pick up Russell Bell and head over to Wyoming because we shipped to the church. <laughs> <laughs> so the big, the truck that I had uh, was only there to take the, the roof, to take the roof off. And one of the funny things that happened there, Brad Mitchell, who you must people know, there being a university lecturer, he was swinging a big um, sledgehammer and nearly killed all day and stopped. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, at the end of that, we should do, we did that ship at the mine, and, and then uh, later I get a phone call. Uh, she said, look, I've been thinking, he said, I thought you'd be just the man to take over for me from some of the things I'm doing. Do you want to think about it? And I said, no, that'll be right. He's 
standing and because if they asked you, you already sat there, you knew you were the man for the job, and he, well, you, just, you had to say yes, didn't you? Because it was an honour. And you delight. You delight. Well, here I am, 20, 32 years later, we're still doing it. And uh, speaking of the shops, we're still doing our run at the moment now, which is, um, you know, still part of his legacy. So we say hooray for that. Thank you, Archie, for asking Trevor, tapping him on the shoulder. Really, really important. And Trevor's doing some wonderful work around here, and he's a can do man too. Get things done. Something new. Um, look, there's wonderful memories. I, I, I'm also aware that Peter's in the sound room. Can you step out, Peter? Because Peter is, was a neighbour, lived right next door to Archie and to Hilda, so he can give us a lot of the town gossip uh, about Archie. T tell us what you need to tell us about Archie uh, that might not have already been mentioned, Peter. Have a seat. Yes, um, Hilda and Archie lived across the road from us in Skidwell Prison. I spent a lot of time over there. Um, there were occasions where they tried to drag me into what could be a very heated discussion um, on a number of topics. Um, my plan was always to either find some common ground and change the subject. Um, and Archie and I used to speak about politics and the church and heavily, fishing, woodworking, and growing vegetables. And I must admit, Archie had a fairly competitive streak, particularly when it came to growing vegetables. Um, anyway, one day I walked across the road and I saw Archie's large builder's wheelbarrow at the front door. It was empty, but it wasn't usually parked there. So I went inside and asked, what was the barrow at the front door? Archie said, uh, I was too tired to move it, I've got to buy a big one. I said, mate, stupidly, I said, you've already got a big wheelbarrow, it's a builder's barrow, they don't make them any bigger. Well, why would you want a big one? He said, well, I've been harvesting vegetables, so if I have a bigger one, I'll have less trips. <laughs> That's lovely, Peter. And I, I like the way that you were the peacemaker there. Politics, yeah, and a bit of politics goes on in life too. It's not a bad thing to be able to have the argy bargy and chin and yet still be friends, even if you take different positions. Well, I was just delighted. We should have had a picture of those three sitting along here because uh, they've all been members of the property committee and uh, what a wonderful group they are. Thank you very, very much for all the good work. And there's heaps more that we can share and hear from you lot. But, um, so chew their ear before you go home today if you want to ask a few more questions. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Peter.